just read a Spongebob Squarepants fanfic in the last episode? Why am I reading another one? Oh, for the love of God. That's right, today's fanfic is another Spongebob Squarepants fanfic. Oh, joy. <laughs> Seeing the last one I read was so fantastic. Something tells me this one isn't going to be great either. But we can cross our fingers and hope that it's good. Well, the fanfic is called The Christmas Party by Dieter Mund X2, who has written 44 stories. Okay. The story is rated T. Well, that's a plus. It's in English. It's humor and it has 19 reviews. Let's not waste any time and get this over with. Spoiler alert for The Secret Box. I guess that's their other fanfic. At the end of The Secret Box, Patrick says he has a hilarious photo of Spongebob from the Christmas party. This is my version of that Christmas party. Oh, this must The Secret Box must be like um, an episode of Spongebob, I guess. And spoilers. This fic is rated T for alcohol consumption, mild language, and one or two sec sexual references. Unlike my other Spongebob fics, this one deviates a bit from canon, though mostly just due to more mature themes. Well, here's one plus. The story is definitely a lot more well-written than the last one, and that's just by judging the author's note. So let's get started. <clears throat> the Christmas Party. Ah. Ah, said the snooty French narrator. It's that special day of the year again. Christmas Eve Eve. Why do you have Christmas Eve Eve twice? It doesn't make any sense. Get rid of it. They're the most important after Christmas Eve and Christmas. Oh, Christmas Eve Eve. Da da da. The seagulls cawed in the tune with jingle bells as they circled the tiny island that exists above Bikini Bottom. Down below, our favorite sea creatures are preparing for a now annual tradition Z Christmas party at Z Crusty Crab. Let's watch, or read, or whatever. Mr. Krabs slammed open the kitchen door. SpongeBob! Mr. Krabs! SpongeBob chirped. Guess how excited I am about the Christmas party! He giggled and stretched his arms out, their entire arms band. This much! Quit screwing around. Are you done with those 300 Krabby Patties I told you to make for the party? SpongeBob turned back to the grill. On numbers 292 through 298 right now. Well, hurry it up, said Mr. Krabs. After, cause after you're done with that, I need you to clean this place up so Squidward can decorate it. Aye, aye, sir. SpongeBob said with a salute. Oh, snickered Mr. Krabs. This party is going to make me a fortune. I'm going to charge for everything. Admittance, food, drinks, bathroom privileges, making small talk. I can't wait. SpongeBob sighed dreamily, not really listening. Don't you just love Christmas, Mr. Krabs? Don't you just love your job, SpongeBob? Said Mr. Krabs mockingly. Because if you, because if you don't get back to work, I'm going to No, Mr. Krabs! Screamed SpongeBob in panic. Don't fire me. I'm done. Here are all 300 Krabby Patties in one order of kelp bits. 
Good job, lad, said Mr. Krabs, his tone softening. Yeah, I know, I could be doing the voice for Mr. Krabs, too, but I don't, don't know how to do it that well, so I'm not going to bother. Now get out there and clean. Clean like you were some type of sponge. Ha ha, get it? Good one, Mr. Krabs, he said as he made his way to the door. Ah, no, it wasn't. Quit your brown nosing. SpongeBob opened the door to lay eyes upon a beautiful Christmas tree, tinsel and lights streaming around the walls and ceiling to the crow's nest, candles on the tables, mistletoe strung up near the restrooms, and various other holiday-related decorations. Squidward, said SpongeBob worried. You were supposed to wait for me to clean up before you decorated. Squidward was standing by a long table that was used that would be used for food later. He was folding napkins into snot into swans. I needed time. You can't rush the art that is holiday decoration. Well, what am I supposed to do? He asked with a frown. Squidward shrugged. I don't care. Just clean around everything. Spongebob fell flat onto his back and sighed. How am I supposed to do that? He laid there for over a half an hour just trying to collect his thoughts. The perfectionist inside him wouldn't let him budge until he figured that out. The party just had to be perfect. Great job cleaning, boy, said Mr. Krebs, bus bursting through the door. You done good. SpongeBob glanced up. But Mr. Krabs, I haven't even started. You haven't? Oh, well, I didn't actually check. It doesn't matter because you know what time it is. SpongeBob jumped in the air. Party time? For some reason, he didn't land and just hovered above the ground in anticipation. Mr. Krabs yanked the air out of him. Almost. He turned to Squidward, stirring the punch. Mr. Squidward, are you done decorating? Huh? Oh, just about. I didn't put the star on top of the tree. Why not? You think I'm going to fall and break my... I mean... Um, I was saving that for Spongebob. Yeah, because it's special. Or something. Spongebob's eyes grew watery. Really, Squidward? He said with a sniff. Um, yeah, here you go. S Squidward dropped the star ornament in Spongebob's hands, not paying attention if the pointy end stuck him. Thanks, Squid, he said merrily. Spongebob made his way over to the tree, but a gasp stopped him in his tracks. Spongebob, off said an offended Patrick walking through the door. I can't believe it. The sponge looked oh, looked down to the little star in his hands. Patrick put his hands on his hips. Is that a voodoo doll of me? I thought we were best friends. Bah! He laughed. No, Patrick, this is the star for the top of the Christmas tree. Oh, well, what are you doing messing with that when it's time to party? It's party time? SpongeBob was hovering again. Arr! There she blows, said Mr. Krabs, seeing a crowd of townspeople fast approaching the Krusty Krab. They all ran in at the same time. Wee-hee, said SpongeBob. Welcome to the Krusty Krab Christmas party, said Mr. Krabs. Make yourself at home, a home where you pay for everything, he frowned angrily. Seriously, I need ten bucks from each of you for entrance. Several minutes passed. The partygoers stood around making awkward small talk cautiously sampling the food, grudgingly turning over their money. It was strangely quiet. Some glanced to their watches, others eyed the door. Oh no, said Mr. Krebs worried. The party is a total bust. I'm going to lose me money. He turned to Spongebob and Squidward. How me come up with an idea to break the ice, boys? Ooh, ooh, Spongebob waved his arms. I know. I can tell jokes. Listen to this one. Why did the Krabby Patty cross the road? Why? Because he didn't want the hungry customers to catch up. Spongebob doubled over, laughing. Bah! Mr. Krabs rolled his eyes and groaned. I need a good idea. How about a little music? Said Squidward, whipping out his clarinet. <clears throat> I know Jingle Bells, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and Hit Me Baby One More Time. The la that last one wasn't even a Christmas song. You two are useless. Mr. Krabs threw his arms up in frustration and scuttled away. Hey, Squidward, Spongebob began after Mr. Krabs was gone, stifling giggles. Here's another joke. Why did Squidward cross the road? Squidward sighed. Why? Because he didn't want the hungry customer to catch up. Blah! I got a joke for you, Spongebob, he sneered. Why did the octopus, what did the octopus say to the sponge? I don't know. What? Goodbye. And with that, he walked away. Spongebob scratched his head.
I don't get it. Mr. Krabs paced nervously. If this party doesn't pick up soon, all my customers are going to leave. And that means all the money leaves, too. Think, Eugene, think. How can I get everyone to lighten up a bit and start having fun? Hmm. Well, let's see. What would make me blow my money? He snorted. That's a stupid question. The last time I wasted money, I was, well, wasted. His eyes whined. That's it. I'll pipe the sponge. The punch. With a hearty laugh, he reached under his desk and pulled out a bottle of vodka. This'll get things started. Meanwhile, the party was still as lame as before. SpongeBob hadn't taken a hint and was, and was telling the patrons his jokes. At first, they feigned a laugh to be polite, but he just kept going and they had reached the point where they just stopped trying. Squidward was the only one who noticed Mr. Krebs pouring the alcohol into the punch bowl. He gasped but quickly sighed, You know... I made that punch from scratch. It's a family recipe, and you just ruined it. First of all, it's punch, not food. And secondly, I made it 80 proof better, said Mr. Krabs. Well, there's no way I'm drinking any now. You people are the last in the entire ocean I want to get wasted with. Suit yourself. You're not paying for anything. Just then SpongeBob approached. Did you guys see me? I was knocking him dead with those jokes. One guy's head actually exploded from their awesomeness. Yeah, hey, hey, yeah, whatever. You should tell them to come over and try some of this delicious punch Squidward made. Mr. Krebs pointed to the bowl. I'll even offer, I'll even lower the price, only five bucks a cup. I think everyone got theirs already, said SpongeBob. But I didn't. Mmm, looks tasty. I'm definitely walking away now, Squidward, said Squidward, then following through with his statement. SpongeBob sipped from the cup. Yummy! Don't drink too much of that stuff, lad. You gotta make... You gotta take the money and keep the food on the table at all times. I don't understand. Why would the punch keep me from doing that? SpongeBob elbowed Mr. Krebs playfully. It's not like it's alcohol or something, right? Oh, no, no, of course not, he replied, sweating a little. Ha ha! Good, because I've never had a drink before. Glancing down, he saw that his cup was now empty. Oops, out already. SpongeBob quickly refilled the cup, drank in just a couple of big gulps, and then put the cup down on the table. Ah! First quenching. Well, I better bring out some more Krabby Patties. The platter is starting to get a little low. He skipped off to the kitchen. What have I just done? SpongeBob didn't know why, but he was starting to feel a little funny. Carrying a, a platter above his head to and from the kitchen had never proved itself to be a difficult task before. But that night he found it quite tricky, but things got a lot worse than that. It wasn't long before he was stumbling around the restaurant. His, high, his eyelids hung at different lengths. Hey, guys, he slurred, approaching a few fresh. What do you call a sponge on Sunday morning? They exchanged confused glances. Ah, drawled SpongeBob before bursting into a giggle fit. I forgot the answer. They started to walk away, but he called after them. Wait, guys, I got another one. This one's dirty. Okay, okay. What's the difference between a starfish and a bucket of mud? To get to the other side. Ha ha! Wait, I think I told that wrong. Just then SpongeBob realized he had to pee. Now. He staggered over to what he thought was the bathroom and unzipped his fly. <laughs> what are you doing, SpongeBob? roared Mr. Krabs. You're pissing all over me cash register. <laughs> Huh? Was all he could say before Mr. Krabs shoved him into the wall. Oh, my precious register, don't worry, Daddy will clean you up. SpongeBob now had, now on his background, I think I'm going to be sick. Hey, buddy, said Patrick, looming over him. What are you doing just laying around? Hey, did you know that your fly's down? SpongeBob hiccuped, and three bubbles that shaped themselves into an unhappy face escaped and floated in the air before popping. Patrick laughed. You look funny. I'm hold on. I'm gonna get up, go get my camera. SpongeBob slowly got up and stumbled around a bit more. A few fish eyed him as he passed by. Suddenly, he bumped into a familiar face. SpongeBob said. SpongeBob said. Sandy, turning around from facing the table. I was wondering where you were. SpongeBob only held his head and groaned in response. Look, I gotta be honest with you. This party is lamer than a centipede missing ninety nine legs. What? Now it's gonna be perfect, he said with slurred speech. Come on.
come on, the food's cold, there's no music. I'll give you music, he shouted, interrupting her. I'll sing a little something called, uh, karaoke, or I, as I like to call it, karaoke. Somehow there was a karaoke machine near the end of the table. It appeared the same way the other random stuff in cartoons do. SpongeBob hopped on the table and grabbed the microphone, but the song's titles were too blurry for him to make out. Hell, oh, screw it. I'll sing my own song. He cleared his throat. SpongeBob hopped. Um, Sp Sandy was embarrassed for the both of them. By now, a small crowd gather had gathered near the table, wondering what the drunk sponge was doing. My tidy whities he sung out of tune. Who, who makes my whole life worthwhile? Tidy. Just then, he stumbled and fell off the table onto his back. SpongeBob said, Mr. Krabs rushing over. You're ruining me, boy. You're turning this party into a disaster. His only response was a bit of vomit gurgling out of his mouth. You should flip him over so he doesn't choke, said Sandy. Mr. Krabs picked him up and shook him. You listen to me, you little... A star falling out of SpongeBob's pants stopped his thoughts. What is that? Is that part of the tree? You never put it up? With a mighty heave, he tossed SpongeBob into the Christmas tree. You get up there and put it on. SpongeBob dazedly held on, about halfway up the tree. The first step he tried to take upward slipped, and he slid down the tree to the bottom. As he, after he hit the floor, the star ornament fell on him, with two of the pointy ends sticking to the top of his head. Upon seeing the sight, Sandy dashed over to his aid. SpongeBob, are you okay? She asked, extending her hand to help him up, but she quickly pulled away when she saw the tree sap on his hands. Oops, don't want to get stuck to ya. Here, she pulled him up by the star lodged in his head, which popped out in her grasp. Miraculously, SpongeBob was now to his feet. The Thanks, Sandy. I didn't think I'd ever see the day, but you're as drunk as a skunk, she said. I think you should go home and get some rest. You know, sleep it off. I'm not drunk, he slurred. I've never drunk in my whole life. Now angry from Sandy's accusation, he wobbled away, muttering to himself, I'll show her. I so not drunk. If I was drunk, wouldn't I know it? Duh. Approaching Squidward under the mistletoe, he stopped. Squidward, am I drunk? Oh no, Spongebob, you were your normal self, he said somewhat sarcastically. I knew it, that squid, square person was so wrong. <clears throat> I'm really debating having some of that punch now, he said, holding his aching head. I'll get you some. The alcohol having shot Spongebob's coronation, which, let's face it, was never that great to begin with, he tripped with his first step, his arms flailed as he reached for the first thing he grabbed onto, which happened to be Squidward's ass. But when he went to pull, pull them away, he had difficulty due to the tree sap stickiness. <sighs> I don't know what you were taught about the mistletoe, Spongebob, began Squidward, gritting his teeth in anger, but it's for kissing, not sexual harassment. He then realized what he said. Not that I'd let you kiss me either. I'm trying to pull away, but my hands are stuck. Hey, guys, said Patrick, walking up. Say cheese, click. Nothing like a good photograph of a sponge with his fly down clutching an octopus's rear end, huh? Patrick, shouted Squidward, ripping himself away from SpongeBob's hands. Give me that camera. Sp Patrick pulled the camera away. No, get your own. Patrick, what are you so angry about? You hardly, you're hardly even in it. It's mostly SpongeBob. All I got was your butt. Patrick laughed. Ha ha, but I got so many of SpongeBob singing, falling out of the tree, and now holding on to your... Give it to me now, screamed Squidward before launching into chase after Patrick. And so Spongebob passed out. Squidward continued to chase Patrick in vain around the... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to have the French accent here. <clears throat> and so Spongebob passed out. Squidward continued to chase Patrick in vain around the restaurant, began the French narrator. Mr. Krabs' party was a bust and it cost him more to put to put it on then he and from it the end I have to say this was probably the best Spongebob Squarepants fanfic I have ever read but I could picture this happening in the show if the show was more adult if you know what I mean it was funny 
it was just funny and I thought the person did a great job keeping all the characters in character and I'm sorry if my voice acting sucked. I tried to do Squidward but I kind of flunked at it, yeah. But it was a very fun story to read. The other Spongebob fanfics I've read, most of them were not that fun, but this one was actually quite entertaining. Huh. There is a god after all, there is a god after all that I finally read a good Spongebob fanfic. Thank you. Well, I'm the fanfic critic. I read it. You listen.